The PL Show is brought to you by Kel Chaco, Kel 360, and Kel Kids Toothpaste. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Kel Toothpaste PL Show. A Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year to all of you. We are grateful that you've been part of the PL Show for the year 2021. Another exciting edition comes your way in 2022. But let's wrap it all up for this year. Since it's Boxing Day, I have a special gift for you and for me as well because I consider this for a gift for myself also because I get to learn all about leadership, mentorship amongst others. You know there's a saying by John Quincy Adams, I'll quote it, it says, if your actions inspire others to dream more, to do more and to learn more, then you are a leader. So that's what leadership is all about. So today, my guest is an embodiment of all that I've told you about. She's a leader in all spheres of her life. She's the Vlisco Ambassador for 2021. She's also the Executive Director for Emerging Public Sector Leaders, I should add. She's won many awards for herself. And of course, that's the best gift I can give you for this day. We are in a season of giving. You never know what you win by just sharing the PO show. Pages is also live on YouTube as well. And we'll get talking shortly after this break. I am MFA Apau, and this is the Kel Toothpaste PO Show, brought to you by the Kel 360, Kel Chuckle, and Kel Kids Toothpaste. Kel is a happy smile. <laughs> Mama Jose. Ah, the fair Ah. Hmm. <laughs> Different era, better result. Time has changed and time has brought Kel Charcoal Toothpaste. Healthy gums, anti cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Kel Chocolate Toothpaste. Sankofa. Yenchi. Kel Chocolate Toothpaste. Happy, Happy smile. Welcome back to the Kel Toothpaste PO Show. I told you I have a special gift for you on Boxing Day. But this gift is also for me as well because I get to learn everything I need to know about leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Yawa Hansen Kwao. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of the show, especially on Boxing Day. Well, thank you. It's a real pleasure and a real gift for me as well. <laughs> um, happy holidays to all your viewers. Okay. What about your upbringing has made you the woman that you are today? Well, Emma, I am the second born of six children. Six? I am the eldest girl and uh, we were raised in a strong Christian family. My father was a politician. Uh, during the time of the military coup that ousted President Hila Liman in Ghana. So formative years of my life, if you cannot tell by my accent, <laughs> were spent abroad. My family lived in the U.S. That's where I started elementary school. And we lived there until 1996. So we returned to Ghana in 1996. I'm a teenager, Americanized, <laughs> don't quite speak the language the way we used to, um, and having to rediscover myself. I've mm -hmm. always grown up with this sense of, you know, I'm not from anywhere, but I'm from everywhere. And I think that has given me a lot of advantages. I think I'm able to see different points of view. I'm able to interact with and feel comfortable wherever I am. And I think that that's given me a love for global issues and a quick uh, dexterity about them as well. No, okay. And I think my upbringing really helped me develop a love for the world and the continent. In my home, for example, you could not go to sleep without prayers. So we had okay. family prayers every night and we had the news on all the time. So we were praying for the wars happening in countries that we've never been to. We grew up, you know, caring about people who have no blood relationship to us. And I think that that's an important part of who I have become. 
That's an interesting upbringing. I have a short video uh, put together in the segment we call Seed to Oak. And that segment is brought to you by Kel Kids Toothpaste. You know, it makes it easier now uh, to brush your kids teeth because it is uh, strawberry flavored and of course it is healthy and safe for the children as well it's fda approved so let's get into the c to oak segment hello my friends my name is cow kids toothpaste wow. i was made to be gentle on your gum but protected I will protect your teeth from cavity, make your teeth whiter, stronger, keep your mouth fresh all day. And best of all, I'm strawberry flavored. So put on a smile and try me. That's amazing. Just try me. That's my job. If you say so, jump on my brush. Make your teeth stronger, chicky chicky whiter, chicky chicky stronger. I'm glad you like your new toothpaste. Don't forget to brush both day and night. Girl Kids, happy smile. I see you there, uh, that beautiful smile. I think you haven't lost it. I have not lost that smile. But first of the girls in the family, out of six siblings, did it come with any challenges you take? Well, a I lot think of when pressure? you're the first of anything, MFI, <laughs> it's challenging. You're the one that everyone's looking up to, to set the example for those to come. And um, like any person in leadership, it feels like a huge weight of responsibility. Uh, shortly after we returned to Ghana, my oldest brother went abroad for college and actually never came back. So I became the eldest the by eldest. default. And so responsibility for younger siblings, responsibility for cooking and helping to do the domestic stuff at home became quite, you know, a part of my, you know, responsibility. But I think with that, that also helped helped me develop a lot of leadership skills. And I think that that's one thing a lot of women don't realize, that taking care of children, looking after a home, that's leadership too. Hmm. You know, sometimes we overlook that and we feel like leadership is what happens when you're on a stage or behind a microphone. But if you can make two kids stop quarreling, <laughs> It's the same set of skills that you need to broker world peace at the UN. Um, and I really think that that's an important lesson that I get from my upbringing, but also I get that from my work with women and girls. Mm -hmm. I see that young girls and young women bear a lot of responsibility at home and think that 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 isn't leadership, but it is. I know that you're the Blisco ambassador for 2021. We'll talk about it shortly. But in between then, what has happened? Well, a couple of things changed for me when we came to Ghana. I think I found myself, if, if you know what I mean. Um, there's a, a woman leader I greatly admire. I spent a bit of time with um, this past weekend, and she talked about the sense of purpose. She's a deputy governor at the Bank of Ghana, LC. Okay, and she just really inspired me with this framing. She said that you get to a certain point in your life when you smell the scent of purpose. And for me, I started to smell that scent of purpose in university. I was one of the first students that went to Ashesi University when it opened up in Ghana, a liberal arts college right here in Ghana. And I had the opportunity to run for student government. I was the first woman to ever contest the presidency of our student government, and I won. And it turned out that it was the first time in the history of Ghana that that had happened. And I think the following year, it happened at the University of Ghana and subsequently in other you places. Paved the way. I look back to that experience as one of my defining moments of shift. And I really am thankful for that because I think, quite honestly, I wasn't looking to prove a point. I just felt I was the best person for the job and I had good ideas. But I think a lot of us as women often diminish what we're capable of because we don't see anybody else around us doing it or being it. And, you know, there's a famous quote that says, you can't really be what you cannot see. And I think one thing that really helped me 
was just keeping images of women leaders in front mm-hmm. of me mm-hmm. and aspiring to be, you know, like them, to learn from their lessons, learn from their, their failures. Okay. And so similarly, um, paving that pathway for other women in student government, I just have continued to feel this weight of responsibility to Mm. pass on the lessons I learned. I'm sure since you've been in Ghana, uh, you've been learning about the culture as well. And what would you say, or how important would you say it is for women to be seen in leadership role, especially from where we've come? We were an immigrant family living abroad, so I, I never was disconnected from Ghanaian culture. But I do understand the ways in which culture can limit women, uh, partly by the fact that you don't see a lot of women on the front line Mm -hmm. in business and politics, for example, inadvertently sends the message to women that they don't belong there. I think Ghana is one of these countries as well where culture, to a large extent, determines the path that most women's lives take. And so it does take a little bit of an extra push to get us to see that we are capable of breaking the mold, if you will. But in spite of that, women have, women do, and women will always lead. And I think, you know, the frame that I would welcome people to start adapting is women and girls are already leading. Mm -hmm. How do we help amplify their leadership? I don't think that with what I do and have done, I am making women leaders. I believe they're leaders already. And it's almost as if many of us are diamonds in the rough. And all we have to do is just blow away the chaff so we see our true work. That's uh, interesting. But let's talk about Vlisco Ambassador. How did we learn that? Vlisco is an amazing brand that adores women. I'm wearing a Vlisco cloth right now, actually. And um, I have had the great honor of being the Vlisco Ghana ambassador for 2021. And in this role, um, I have a great opportunity to mentor more women. Vlisco launched the Vlisco uh, Women's Mentoring Program. And there are, um, I think, about 20 mentees that all Vlisco ambassadors over the past years have had the opportunity to interact with and to support over the past years. Um, As a Vlisco ambassador, I also have the opportunity to give a certain sum of money to a charity of my choice. And I decided to give that money to Emerging Public Leaders of Ghana, Mm. which is an amazing organization that is doing a great job to help prepare the next generation of public servants for Africa. With my Vlisco 5,000 euro gift, I have been hosting mentorship programs for young women in public service. How many How many of these women would say? So we hosted our first event a few weeks ago with Elsie, the deputy okay. governor of the Bank of Ghana. Um, it was phenomenal. And she was such an inspiration to these young up and coming women in public service. There were 65 women present. Um, And over the next year, we're hoping to host four more of such events. We'll get into 360 segment here on the Phenomenal Lady Show and it's brought to you by Kel 360 Toothpaste. It gives you that fresh minty breath all day, protects your teeth from every cavity as well. It's FTA approved and it's safe and affordable uh, for the entire family as well. Please, let's do 360 now. Yawa Hansen Kwao is the executive director of Emerging Public Leaders, a public service leadership organization committed to preparing Africa's next generation of ethical public sector leaders. In over a decade, Yawa has committed to nurturing female leaders and social entrepreneurs in Africa with her NGOs, the Leading Ladies Network and Impact Hub, both in Accra. Her passion and drive for women empowerment has seen her occupy various positions, such as being a leadership consultant to UN Women, where she helped to develop leadership curricula to enhance the capacity of women leaders in East and Southern Africa. She is currently a member of the Board of Directors of Ashasi University and the reigning Blisco Ambassador for 2021. She is married to Charles Hansen Kwao, and they are blessed with three wonderful children. That's Yawa 360. I know that you've had encounters with a number of world leaders and change makers. 
all over and um, how would you say this has impacted and then also what you're also going to impact on others ethical public sector leaders i know that that's the way your passion is how is this all you know making everything work nicely for you you'd say well mfi i've been really blessed to have had the opportunity to be mentored and coached and supported by phenomenal leaders. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it's really impacting my choice of how I'm impacting and mentoring young people. Uh, for example, I'm a part of the Amuje Initiative, okay. which is um, an initiative by Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, former president of Liberia. I am part of a cohort of women that she's personally mentoring and opening her network of women leaders too, uh, to support our onward professional journeys. And as I receive that mentorship, I am also passing it, you know, nah. I believe every woman needs to operate three circles. You need a circle of those that are with you, your peers, um, people who are kind of in the same phase of life as you, where you can learn and share ideas that are relevant and contemporary. You need a circle of those behind you. Those behind you are those that you learn the lessons and you help them escape, <laughs> escape uh, going through the same you know mistakes well, that yeah. you have made. Uh, but those behind you also ground you because they remind you of who you used to be. And I think it's every woman's duty to make a circle of those behind them benefit from their life lessons. Mm. The last circle is the circle of those ahead of you. And those are women that I greatly admire, that I seek counsel from, seek mentorship from. Because if you're the big cheese in your group, you're in the wrong group. Mm -hmm. You really need to be around people who are challenging you to think bigger, challenging you to dream bigger, encouraging you from their life journey. Because to you, they are in the circle ahead of you. But to them, you are in that circle behind yeah. them. And in so doing, all of these concentric circles kind of form that circlehood of sisterhood that I think every woman needs to create around herself. I see that there's a meteoric rise when it comes to where you've come from and where you are currently. In the next 10 years or so, where would Yawa Hansen Kwao be? We will have to wait and see. <laughs> you know, the Bible says eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of anyone. Um, you know, I just really want to continue learning and serving. And I think right now my energies and my focus is how do we inspire that next generation of women and young people to see themselves as able and capable of being on the front line of leadership. And three children, you're a mother as well. Aside from everything that you're doing, how are you able to, to cope with it? Parenting is hard, mm -hmm. working is hard. Parenting and working is extra hard. But I think there are a couple of strategies that help. I think number one, you know, planning and organizing and, and, you know, being a stickler for how you are apportioning your time. So I, for example, you know, live by my schedule. I Is know that what's 24 on it. hours enough for you? I think it's enough. Okay. And here's why. If you plan well and if you invest your time and resources well, it's more than enough. I really, really try hard to schedule myself into my calendar as well. There's a block of time every afternoon where, you know, no meetings, nobody, it is just me. And I think that, you know, learning that um, after my first child, that the calendar is your friend <laughs> has helped. I think the second thing is investing. Um, every woman needs a me fund, mm -hmm. a fund where you're paying for childcare or paying for time away or doing something for yourself. Because you make a big mistake if you leave your professional advancement or your dreams and goals in the hands of other people. And so that may mean you sacrifice certain things that other people are doing so that you can create a fund for yourself so that you will have some flexibility and freedom to do other things. And yeah. so with my me fund, it's, you know, taking a course or hiring help, you know, an assistant, okay. something, someone to, to keep my life a little more organized so that I can be focused and focus on the things that only I can uniquely do. Mm. And then the third thing is just learning to pay for help. I think a lot of us have different priorities, of course. And I talk about this in this book that I wrote a few years ago, that I have a threefold strategy. I pray for help. 
I ask for help, you but I pay, pay for, for help. help. And I think that, you know, that strategy hasn't failed me yet. And that's how I'm balancing. Like, you know, first and foremost, I believe the Bible says we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses in everything. So that means there's no problem that I face right now that someone hasn't faced before. So I ask, ask for help from those who have been there and, and receive counsel. But sometimes you do have to make the investment of paying for professional help. Mm-hmm. And I think one of my mentors taught me that you have to invest in quality help if you want to have a quality life. Well, I've picked a thing or two about um, how to strike that healthy balance. Let's talk about the awards first. There have been a lot of great recognitions. And I am proud to be the Vlisco ambassador, for example, mainly because it's given me a platform to impact more young women. I was listed among the most inspirational women, and that makes me happy. It means I'm doing the job that I mm-hmm, like. Mm-hmm. Um, but my purpose really is to to give to that next generation, and I it, it keeps my soul happy. God bless you. Let's talk about the down moments. Are there any? I've had tons. We don't have enough time to talk about all the hurt. but I And I think that that's part of what inspires me to think about others. You know, our second child, for example, was born with immense medical difficulty. I have never been able to bring him home, for example. He is living with lots of medical constraints. He has 24-hour nursing care, and it hurts to think about it. It hurts that he can't live at home with his other two siblings. It hurts that, you know, during the lockdown, for example, we went for almost a year without getting to see our son. It hurts. And I always ask myself the question, it hurts, but what can I give thanks for? Not to say that we shouldn't acknowledge the pain in our life, but I do think that sometimes you can be so disproportionately focused on all that is wrong in your life that you stop functioning and being of use to others. And I think that there are so many of us that were on the path to purpose, but then some major crisis wiped us off the pathway. And I just am so determined to let that not be my testimony. So yes, I have a son with a lot of needs. We were told he wouldn't live to see his first birthday. By God's grace, he's lived to see his fourth. He is still not able to live at home with us. I think about all of the things that could be. And I lament because I hurt. I'm human. Yeah. But I don't dwell there. I try not to wallow in the self-pity. Because MFA, the truth is, everyone's carrying something. Yeah. And I think that God isn't as interested in our comfort as God is interested in our purpose. And so I do cry. Mm. I do have those days where I feel, man. Does these moments, for instance, that you've um, recounted, does it shake your faith in the God that you said? It does. And I try to, I write. I find writing cathartic. I journal. I also record voice notes. I can pull up my phone and play for you prayers that I prayed in my son's hospital room. We were hospitalized for about 10 months and I would watch my son lose his breath like 10, 20 times a day and have to be resuscitated. I would see the life leave his face, his lips turn black and blue. I would weep, I would cry, I would pray. When you start having to believe God for breath, it changes you. I don't waste time anymore like I used to, being mad at people, being a little petty, trying to retaliate. Because this crisis taught me that life is precious and it is fleeting. And you do yourself a disservice if you allow what you're feeling to reign over what God has you to do. And so, My faith has been shaken a lot. I think, you know, I fast, I pray, I tithe, I give, I'm good to people, I try to be. I think that this journey is teaching me that in moments that you think you can't handle, God carries you in a way that only he can. Mm. 
So I feel like I'm being carried. You are not only phenomenal, you are strong, you motivate in every way. Listening to you, uh, well, let's go for a quick break. We'll right back. Mommy Shossi. Ah, the fair, fair. Hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Different era, better result. Time has changed and time has brought Cal Charcoal Toothpaste, healthy gums, anti cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Chocolate toothpaste. Sankofa. Yenchi. Kill chocolate toothpaste. Happy, Happy smile. smile. My friends, my name is Cal Kids Toothpaste. Wow. I was made to be gentle on your gum but protected. I will protect your teeth from cavity, make your teeth whiter, stronger, keep your mouth fresh all day. And best of all, I'm strawberry flavored. So put on a smile and try me. That's amazing. Just try me. That's my job. If you say so, jump on my brush. brush. Makes your teeth stronger, chicky chicky whiter, chicky chicky stronger. Yay! You did it! I'm glad you like your new toothpaste. Don't forget to brush both day and night. Girl kids, happy smile. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us here on the Kill Toothpaste PO show is the Boxing Day edition. Of course, we got a bit mushy at the point, but uh, we're back and we have a kind of faith as well. So we're back to continue the show and thanks for staying with us. There's a DIY segment here on the Kill Toothpaste PO show and it's brought to you by Kill Chuckle. With Kill Chuckle, you get that white teeth and then that fresh breath as well. Before, we used to, I don't know if Yawan knows it, but our grandparents used to dip uh, plantain peduncle in charcoal, grounded charcoal, just to brush our teeth, to give us that white teeth and the fresh breath as well. Now you don't get to do that. Do you know that? I do know that. You know, okay. <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay, well, it's interesting that you know that. Now you don't get to do that. Kel Chuckle gives you that same effect. It's FDA approved, safe for the entire family, and it's affordable as well. Kel is a happy smell. So I know that uh, the DIY, earlier you told me that you used to record audios because the, the encounters, you the prayer and all. So what are we doing for DIY? Hi everyone and welcome to my DIY segment. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a simple trick and strategy that I use to enable me continuing my mentorship of my uh, young women who look up to me. Even if I don't have the time or I'm unable to meet them in person, I've discovered a platform that enables me to pre-record and to upload the content so that depending on what they need to hear and what they need to know, I can just point them in the right direction. So come on in and let me show you the platform and how I've been using it to mentor young women. And so this is the first video that I recorded. Is It's called Ready to Crush Your Crisis. And I basically chronicled my journey with my son in the hospital and some of the seven strategies that I was using to help me cope with that period of time. The platform that I use is called Kajabi. So I basically put my phone up, record what I want to say and upload it. And it's been really fun to use it to mentor young people and I hope you enjoy it too. Thanks so much. So that's a DIY. And um, I bet you I'll be using this uh, technique uh, shortly. Great. You should be watching out for mine as well, because there's a lot to tell. Sometimes you just don't know how to go about it. But do you love surprises? I yes. love surprises. Yes. My surprise is on Zoom. <laughs> it's my sister. <laughs> Hello, Gifty. Hello. 
You're surprised? A very big surprise. Who is Hi. Gifty? Gifty is my sister. Oh, my only sister. Your only sister. Yes. Okay. Gifty, what kind of sister would you say your wa is or was uh, when you were growing up? I don't want to say too much. Otherwise, I'm going to be too much. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, but, um, so, like, every big sister, she was um, a bit bossy. So, right now, I can say she's a huge support. She's someone that I look up to, and I'm really blessed to have her as my sister. Is there that one thing that you haven't told her that we would want to hear? It's Boxing Day after all. So please tell us, what would you want Yawa to know? Yawa, I know I don't tell you this often or probably haven't even told you before. I really do love you and I look up to you a lot and I am super blessed to have you as a sister. I am so, so, so proud of what you're doing, what you've been able to achieve, the way you inspire um, other women and girls and i'm just so blessed to have you as a sister so that is what i would like to say i know you you are hiding a lot from us in terms of uh you know the kind of sister she was you know and she's told us that she's the first sister and she's actually you know uh, taking care of all of you when your big brother left but i'll give you the option of just two words mm -hmm. if you have to describe her with two words what would it be she's um determined and mm -hmm. loving if i would say okay oh. <laughs> i'm sure you want to say something to yourself oh well. gifty this is um i'm i'm feeling quite emotional um but thank you this means a lot to hear from you we've been through a lot as a family i thank god for you gifty god bless you and i love you too god thank bless you too thank you very much uh, gifty for joining us here on the phenomenal right, lady right. feel oh, show so that's a uh, gifty sapong your only sister what a uh, sweet surprise i told you i'm full of surprises <laughs> so she says you are determined and loving we've seen that the determination and the loving part as well thank you so much uh, for being a part of our show today you've really inspired us you've really motivated us and we're hoping that we'll be one of the leaders uh, that you always want us to be. Many thanks, sir, for your company. My pleasure. And it's a Boxing Day. I have a special gift also for you oh. from us. And um, you love tradition, don't you? I do. Do you know what this means? This is a traditional stool, isn't <laughs> okay. it? Yes. So this, Yabo <laughs> Do you speak tree? Not very no. well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that is what this is for. And to show that you indeed a phenomenal lady. So oh, from us to you, you, thank you thank so you. much thank you for so being much. a part of the show. And that's not all. We have the Kel range of products also for you. We have the Kel 360, the Kel Chaco, and the Kel Kids to Paste. Uh, you know what the Kel Chaco does. I've told I you do. about that already. <laughs> the Kel 360 also give you that cool, fresh mm. breath. The Kel Kids for the nieces and the nephews and the children as well. Oh, thank you, <laughs> so thank, thank you, you, thank you. As well. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. I will treasure this. Yes, yes. Thank you to the Kel group of companies yes. and I look forward to using them. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of the show. So once again, we wish you a uh, Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. Go out there and give. It's Boxing Day. Put a smile on the face of someone. I am MFA Apau, and this is the Kill Toothpaste PO Show. Another exciting edition comes your way in the new year. See you in the year 2022 and stay out of trouble. Peace. Thank you so much. Paint, smiling, mami, chanche, faint. Kron kron vera, dio, saint. On pento kwa kasa kasa ne, complaint, bae. You know they give me pressure. Your love and no fit measure. 